What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday. Today, we're going to be going over the Toy Fair stuff. I know that that's a week behind when it comes out, but, you know, my life is my life. Man, I gotta, gotta get the kids fed and all that kind of stuff. It's got, I got stuff to do. It sucks when these big shows always come out on a weekend, because it's usually I gotta wait till the next weekend, and this is something that, like, I just can't wait. And there's nothing here that I really couldn't wait for. The stuff that I'm most excited about isn't really the focus of this channel in regards to what was revealed at Toy Fair. So, spoilers, it's the turtle stuff and the storm collectible stuff. But we do have a little bit of house cleaning stuff. Uh, Seeker Week, most seem to enjoy. I know that the wings, supposedly there's a thing uh, with the wings on the new age stuff. You know, sorry. It, it, luckily, it didn't bother me. That should be a credit to the figure that it looks so good that even though I had the wings up a little bit higher than they should be, it still didn't bother me because they're so well made and look so damn good. So there's something to take note of there. Also, there was people saying that I didn't have the flaps pegged in completely on the magic square. Like that might be true in some cases. It wasn't true in all of them. It just couldn't have been. And there was pro there's just tolerance issues with that set. You'll know when you when you get it. And it's a shame. Hate to see it. Uh, the four dumb. Dummies packaging video, a lot of people brought up the open and play packaging as the worst packaging. You're right. I can't believe I missed that and forgot about that. You are 100% right. Uh, what you call fans hobby goes down to second place and open and play shoots up the first place of worst packaging ever. I think it came in a freezer bag or something. I don't entirely recall. It was terrible. So real quick costume change. I'm like Mr. Rogers. You know, I just change twice a day. You never know what I'm going to pop up in. Honestly, though, it's because I have to cut this in. So, a couple more things. One, four dummies, little hands, big collections. It was interesting to me to, to read the comments, and I saw a lot of people saying, like, well, kids are about electronics these days, and I do agree. However, I also think, like I said in that video, these kids are also, like, the things that they're conscious about, the things that they are looking at, like, I feel like kids are more into physical fitness and health, and I've seen kids turn down sweets because of things that I... I never considered. There's a whole conversation to be had there, not on this platform, about health, nutrition, fitness, and how it has changed in regards to its view over time, but it has been fascinating to me. I think it's literally toys. They're into electronics. We were into electronics. They're into it more because there is more. They're into sports. We were into sports, but now they're also into fitness, and they're into exercise, and they're into nutrition, and they're into things that I, I can't speak for you guys' neighborhood, but we didn't care. Whoever had the ice cream, that was the best friend for the day. Your mom bought what? Bring it out. But yeah, and then a lot of people, different views on how parents handle their collections with their kids. It was fascinating to read, so thank you for those comments. And for the people that have hit me up privately and been like, man, I'd love to hear dummies conversations about this. Thanks. I, I pull them all, and we kind of talk about them and see what would be most fulfilling for a show, so keep them coming. Lastly, this Zeta Toys Pioneer, which I praised in the video. It broke on me when I was transforming it back, long after the review was done. I did a Patreon episode talking about how that stung because it did sting because it was so well done. I, I can't express how disappointing it was. The sliding hinges on the doors on the back of the vehicle use caution because they will fail. I was being very cautious because I understood that it was a meticulous thing. I know that's probably hard for some of you to believe and I get it, but I was and it failed, which was a huge bummer and it left a very foul taste on my mouth and it really took away from something that I thought was pretty Pretty close to perfect. There's a lot of people that said, well, the 3A looks better. Not. Like, dude, yeah, I agree. Yeah, but the fact that this thing transforms is a bonus, right? Like we had that discussion, transforming versus non-transforming, and we're going to circle back to that soon. Just focusing on non-transforming and price point variation and stuff, that is coming. Don't worry. And I think that's it for my edit. So, Mr. Rogers time. And I think that's it. It's going to be an interesting month coming up for March because I hear that the factories aren't opening up until March, and then you talk about the, the time that it takes to kind of get production up and running and then stuff out the door so things might slow down I got some stuff in my head planned out to try to make do to you know keep content coming and keep you guys kind of in, in interested in what's going on but it's gonna get fishy I got a couple more sit down Saturday ideas that that won't be a problem dummies will be hitting later on in March and then I got a couple ideas for some some topics and I think a diorama the Golden Lagoon diorama is coming so I, I've got some stuff I just got to start getting creative on my end I advise everybody else to do the same if you're making the content and with that being said I, I 
I think we can jump right into this. I don't have too much else to kind of catch up on. And if I think of something, I'll add it at the end. So here's my impressions and thoughts on regards to things that were revealed at Toy Fair that I'm interested in. I'm not going to talk about stuff I'm not interested in, and I'm not going to talk about stuff that I think is just silly or utter garbage or whatever. I'm going to talk about stuff that I think either has an interesting or important merit, be it positive or negative, both in regards to what my viewership tends to be interested in and myself. Hopefully it'll be of worth and value. Let's get started. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to get started with this Mondo Man at Arms. And I can't remember if we've seen this before. I think we have. But either way, this thing looks fantastic. I couldn't remember for sure. So I thought it was worth showing just because of how great it looks. It looks amazing. I'm not in for this. I'm not in for this line. But anybody that is, I totally get it. It's shaping up beautifully. And I also wanted to show this gentle giant who's kind of making a resurgence into the Star Wars game, this Ahsoka statue. I like the idea of them doing 1-6 statues. Hot Toys Toys has kind of killed the one six statue game and it's nice to see somebody kind of take part in it again I think Kota Bakia is going to start doing a few more as well it just looks like there's going to be a resurgence there and I'm into that I'd like some standalone pieces for some of these display areas I've created around my house that aren't necessarily tied to quote unquote the collection room so I'm going to be picking this up as well we'll just stay on Star Wars because they didn't really show much the snow speeder with DAC very expensive for what this is and I think it's probably disproportionately priced I feel like it's more expensive than the TIE Fighter, but I can't really remember. I know the TIE Fighter ended up going for like 20 bucks in an Arby's coupon because they couldn't sell them due to the size of them. I'm guessing they'll be able to sell this a bit better because the vehicle isn't quite as large. I'm in on this, but only because I want the DAC, I'll probably end up selling the Snowspeeder. We also got the Darth Revan lightsaber. It has a number of different cool light up features to it, like a purple and a white and a variation between the two, maybe even a red. I can't recall, but that's pretty exciting. And Darth Revan is a super popular character and a kind of a fan favorite, so that's cool to see. Flames Toys was there. They recently showed a Megatron that's pretty cool. It's not my favorite Megatron design from IDW, but I get why they did it. But they've also been teasing this Batman Arkham Knight figure, and it looks really impressive to me. However, it doesn't look to be as intricately engineered as some of their Transformer stuff. So I am curious as to the price point and whether or not the price point will remain kind of constant. We have a discussion coming regarding Flames Toys, not specifically, but just non-transforming figures in general and the prices associated with them that I'm looking forward to. To. We'll stay on Batman as well for a minute and talk about this McFarlane stuff, which I've been reviewing on Patreon as resources have permitted, and I continue to kind of be interested in what they're doing. However, it's just a lot of misses, man. Like, I don't feel like they quite got this Joker or Batman right from Arkham, but to be fair, they seem to have gotten it better than they got this Wonder Woman. Now, this Wonder Woman is supposed to have used digital scans of Gal Gadot. I can tell you straight away, they didn't use any scans of her legs because it looks like she's standing on two baby carrots. Like all woman, two baby carrots, and then knees to feet. Very bizarre sculpting. But while we're on the subject of digital scans and face mapping and all that sort of stuff, let's take a look here. Like that's not Gal Gadot, man. And you even put her next to her. That's a gal named Gadot. That's not Gal Gadot. We'll use that to transition to more awful faces. This Mortal Kombat line is just terrible looking, in my opinion. It's just really, really bad. And this katana is perhaps the worst looking face I've seen so far. There's just so many proportion issues. And then here there's sculpt issues on top of it. I just, I had to include it just because of how bad I think it looks. But I don't want to trash McFarlane this whole show. So I do want to look at this Space Marine, which I do think looks good. I'm not sure where the engineering is, if it's going to be like some of their more recent figures or if it's going to be like some of their old school figures. But this doesn't look to have the amount of engineering you would expect, but it is beautifully sculpted and beautifully painted, which is nice to see. I think that the key to a Warhammer toy line is the special characters, though, not the troops. That's just my opinion. Here's something that kind of took us by surprise, Ghostbuster figures, and they're coming full steam ahead. They've got the animated series versions, and then they have these movie versions, and I'll tell you what I'm most impressed about by these movie versions. It's the scope. That's what I always find frustrating about stuff like this. They'll do like the four Ghostbusters, and then they'll call it a day, but they're doing the dogs, they're doing Gozer, they're doing Sigourney Weaver in the sexy red dress. Like, that's cool. I hope they do Rick Moranis. I hope they do uh, the lady that worked at the dispatch or whatever. 
whatever. Like, uh, you know, like that's that's a cool idea. And especially for like hardcore Ghostbuster fans, of which there are many, you know, guys out there building proton packs and stuff. Shout out to T2RX6. He's a beautiful proton pack that he made himself. Like this is a nice thing to have and a nice line to collect. We'll move on to Mezco briefly. I'm not the biggest Mezco fan in the world, but we did see some impressive stuff from them. This 89 Batman with the seamless suit looks great. I think think I'm going to try to go hot toys on this stuff. I know the late tax is significant, but I think that's going to be my route. If I wasn't though, this would be a nice option. And then they've also recently kind of announced that their ownership of some of the Fox properties. So we get the Predator, which looks good. And I think it's actually going to look better than most of their stuff because it's relying mainly on their plastic goods. And I don't think there's a better plastic sculptor and painter toy producer in America than Mezco. So I think that this Predator will be something to watch as I also think this alien will be great as well. Really interested to see where they go with those two lines. There's a lot of, once again, hardcore Predator and Aliens fans. I'm sure they're very appreciative of this. And then we're getting some Ape stuff, which is pretty cool. I think I'm kind of okay with my NECA ones, but nonetheless, this is a cool idea and a cool looking attempt. I might get some characters that NECA didn't make. We'll have to wait and see. Marvel Legends had a pretty impressive reveal, which I find interesting because Marvel and Star Wars were up for their licensing agreements with Hasbro. Hasbro did did manage to get them again. So that's nice for the legends and black series collectors, et cetera, et cetera. But we didn't see a whole lot of black series reveals. And I just assumed that that was because of these licensing agreements, but we got tons of Marvel legends. I'm not sure what's going on. We got a black Tom coming. That looks great. A Maverick coming, which looks good. It's going to be that kind of like cheesy looking gold plastic. So that's kind of a bummer, but the sculpt looks on the point. A strong guy. Finally, the strong guy figure has been like my runabout and run amok joke for the masterpiece line. Like just something I thought we'd never get. I know we've gotten teases of him in the past, but it's nice to really see him in all of his glory. Fantastic. Sunspot as well, which looks great, and Warpath. So we're almost done with the 90s X-Force lineup, which is pretty cool. Uh, Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker, I'm in for both of them. And I'm also in for Quasar and possibly the leader. Either way, they're cool characters to see. I like how they're like sprinkling in these little obscure characters with strong fan support amongst the kind of more popular, you know, your Deadpools, your Wolverines, your Spider-Mans, etc. Speaking of Wolverine, we are getting this like movie verse Fox stuff in the Marvel Legends, which we've never really seen before. Obviously, that's because of Disney acquiring it and all that kind of stuff. But that's just cool. It's just like, you know, the evolution of stuff is nice to see. We're, uh, we're getting a classic Storm finally, which is the one I've really been wanting. So I'm looking forward to that. And we're also getting a Nimrod, which is cool. I also hear that the next Hasbro Pulse figure might be a Sentinel. So I might see if I can find a way to display that as well. We'll move on to Storm Collectibles that had a pretty impressive impressive showing. From their Injustice line, we get to see their Superman, which I think we've seen before, their Batman and Ares, which look great. The diorama is a little less than stellar. Speaking of which, shout out to Crashbox Customs. My buddy Chris, co-host of Nerd Rage Radio, has some pretty impressive displays to show off some of Mezco's releases. Really impressive stuff. But back to these Storm Collectible figures. I think the Superman looks good. The head looks a little skinny to me, but I know that's part of the game. The Batman looks good, but I just don't like the the way he looks in that game. He just looks, the head, something wrong with that head, once again, so to speak. And then the Ares looks phenomenal. Storm Collectibles is not a big fan of doing female characters, which kind of bums me out. The only reason why we get a lot of them in the Street Fighter line is because Capcom has kind of insisted. So it's kind of depressing, especially with franchises like Mortal Kombat and DC Comics that have really strong female standout characters, both visually and just story-wise, that we're not going to get as many as I would hope. But we are getting a Montaro, which looks pretty cool. You know, another big sort of ambitious figure. I'm surprised we haven't got a Kentaro, you know, retooled from the Goro, but I would imagine it's coming. And now we got to move on to this G.I. Joe conversation, which... Look, so we got the Snake Eyes pictures initially, right? And it looks amazing. And this kind of deluxe version is going to come with all these extra weapons and hands. It just looks like everything you could possibly want in a 112 scale figure. And surprisingly, from a mass retail producer like Hasbro. But as this line began to expose itself, the weaknesses started to show up. Now, let me say this. We're going to go through all of these. I'm going to start with Duke. I don't hate this design. And I'm okay with updated designs of the G.I. Joe characters. I think it actually makes some sense. 
and I think that Duke is an example of one that works. The armor is a bit much for me, but I don't hate it, and it still is reminiscent enough of the character. I kind of feel the same for Roblox. Now, as I've been looking at these and hearing people talk and so forth, it looks like they're going to be using a ball joint between the torso and the pelvis, which is something they haven't done in the past, but they probably should be doing because the weird split swivel joint looks weird, but it's nice to see. It's just another step in the right direction with them, and I'm guessing it's a double ball peg from the head to the neck as well. Hasbro is making huge advancements in their 112 scale figures that I really think that we should take it notice of and be appreciative of in a lot of regards. Roadblock is another one that I think looks okay. The head sculpt looks a little weird to me. Super pronounced brow on that unit, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Once again, I feel like the armor is a little out of place, especially when it's painted gold. I don't think that does much for it. I hate the Space Age weaponry, but I get it. However, it's the Scarlet I feel like that's most off. See, Duke, Snake Eyes, and Roadblock all are kind of updated versions of themselves, but they keep the iconic things about them that most people relate them to. Whereas with Scarlet, I feel like they drop the ball. Her costume is very specific, and when you take it out of play, it ends up not looking like Scarlet, but just like some red-haired chick. So I'm really disappointed in this costume design for her. Hopefully we'll get a classic one, kind of, or more classic, more classically inspired, I guess I should say, later on. But I am impressed with the overall sculpts of the figures. I am impressed with the articulation changes and updates and engineering that it looks like we're getting. And I am impressed with the amount of paint applications that's on these guys. This is Black Series level paint on a Marvel Legend level articulated figure. And that is something we need to take note of. We're going to move into NECA. I think they had probably the most noteworthy reveals, the stuff that people kind of mostly talked about. But we'll start off with their alien stuff. I'm not a huge fan of this stuff. I love aliens, but I'm not a huge fan of this line. I don't need to collect it. It's not a franchise I need toys of, but I like that they're doing more supplementary characters. I think that's cool. They got a quarter scale cartoon version of the Turtles coming. I have their quarter scale movie versions. I think they lend themselves better to that scale, but for those that are massive fans of the cartoon, I think this will be a nice addition as well. But once again, it's their six inch figure that's making all the noise. We're getting the Triceratops army with a Triceraton, whatever they were called, and we're getting tons of repaints of them, which is fine and slight retools. But that Baxter Stockman and that April O'Neil and that Casey Jones, like holy moly guacamole. It's just, it's just perfect. I mean, the April is like a little too cartoon accurate maybe where it's like a little goofy looking, but like it just, that Baxter Stockman is so bloody good. Like I'm super excited for it. Now, I don't think any of these figures are gonna be built to any sort of level of quality. I think the articulation is gonna be trash, but they will look amazing and more power to them. I think the splinter looks great. The metal head is looking better than ever and seeing the metal head next to the turtles and getting an idea for that scale, I think that works. The rock soldiers look great. The little android things look great. And then we're getting a Toka and a Razor, which I'll just throw into the regular line as if they were in the cartoon because I always feel like they felt like a part of that fabric. Just awesome choices, awesome sculpts, awesome paint. Everything else is up for typical NECA scrutiny, but really, really promising looking stuff. So let's move into the Transformers. We're going to dig into this upcoming show in a future episode, but I have mixed feelings, largely. So I'm, I feel like we're seeing a bit more of the return of some of the hollowness. I feel like I'm seeing more hollowness from some of these reveals, like namely in that forearm there. I feel like the kibble is perhaps getting worse in some cases, specifically with the female characters, both with Chromia and RC. There's a picture here of RC from the side. I feel like that shows it off most, but I don't think this RC looks bad overall. I think she looks fine. Definitely an improvement from the previous one in, in regards to kind of, I don't know, making the figure feel more alive and less like a toy. And, and that's not something you can necessarily point to as to why, but I think it has to do with proportions and sculpt and, and that sort of stuff. But it does look great. We also get a double dealer, which I know a lot of people are excited about. I don't, it doesn't look very good to me, but I know a lot of people are excited about it. We're getting an Alicon, which I feel like the alligator mode looks super silly. I mean, it's a silly design anyway, and I get that, but I just feel like the way they did the arms and stuff, it just doesn't quite work. The head sculpt looks good. I think the robot mode on him looks better than the Alicon mode or the alligator mode rather. The Quintesson, the Quintesson is large too, which is interesting. I wonder if many people will use that as a supplementary piece for their masterpiece collection. And, and you know, in lieu of the upcoming x bots one, that'll be kind of interesting to see because it looks good. The sculpt looks good, everything. Like I get it. And a runabout and run amok. Now all we need to do is get them in MP scale and I'll be a happy camper. Uh, and then of course the two big reveals, the Skylinks, which I think looks okay. It's an interesting approach to kind of turn the links also into a base mode for like the shuttle. 
I think that's a cool idea, something that we hadn't necessarily thought of before, something that will feel more rewarding in buying that piece because, you know, the cat just usually just lays down. So I think that's a nice touch. And I don't think it looks bad. Like, I don't think it's a bad sculpted thing. I think it looks like the G1 it, with a slight modern upgrade and update. You know, the NASA stuff and all that kind of stuff is cool little nice touches. And I think it's a decent looking thing. I'm not in on it, but I think it's a decent looking thing. But I'll tell you what I think I am in on. I'm probably going to pick up this Scorponok. Um, I have the Metroplex and I have the Trypticon and they're kind of stand-ins for me. But I think I'm going to get this as well. It looks the part. It looks on par with the rest. I do think that the head sculpt is a little goofy looking like it doesn't look as like intimidating as I would prefer but I don't hate it and I feel like it, it pulls off the base mode well but you know I'm forgiving of base modes and I feel like it pulls off the scorpion mode well it's gonna fetch a higher dollar but it's huge right so I get it it's fine and it's nice that they actually did it you know like that's something you got to give Hasbro props for you know I, I don't think that anybody would have necessarily ever assumed that they would do all of the city bots and they have now like they literally have Omega Trypticon Fort Mac Metroplex, Scorponok, and they're even throwing you Skylinks for good measure. Like, they did a good job. And um, I'm, I'm going to be in on this, so I'll be reviewing that for sure and then kind of throwing it with the rest of my collection. And then I, I do want to talk briefly about these 3A items. Uh, they've been making a lot of noise recently, and they're all movie designs, but they look fantastic. And this sound wave in particular really is stunning and looks just like his portrayal, I feel like, in the Bumblebee film, uh, as does the Blitzwing, to be fair, and as do most of them, but I, I just kind of I dig this more. I don't think I'm in on this, but it's very cool. And I, I like where they're headed and I will be watching them very closely. And they're definitely going to play a part in this non-transforming conversation that we're going to have to have here soon. And shout out to Chris Pinkerton, who is the guy behind Crashbox Customs. He was at Toy Fair with his stuff on display with Mezco. And he was on Nerd Rage this past week, episode 235, I think. Kind of giving some behind the scenes discussion and thoughts as as to uh, the Toy Fair experience this year. So that should do it, man. These turtles are super exciting to me. And I know, I know they're not going to be made well, but they are going to look so good. Hate to see it, but also love to see it. And that G.I. Joe stuff, I'm going to be watching it closely because there's such potential. Hasbro has really gone from a joke of a company in regards to 112 scale figures to a major competitor at 112 scale figures, especially for their price point. I could have a whole conversation conversation about it, uh, and, I, and, I, and I might elsewhere, but there's a lot to talk about there. They have catapulted from being the makers of Hasbro Legends Tiger Shark to now making figures that are hyper competitive at figures two and three times their price, so that's impressive. With that being said, I'll be back next week with reviews and maybe the Golden Lagoon, and next Saturday we're gonna, I don't want to spoil it, but we're gonna talk again next Saturday. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, until next time, take care.